Jessica with that hashtag show and I'm here today with Corey Michael Smith from May December. Um, he plays Georgie, the son of Julianne Moore's character Gracie from her first marriage. Now this is a movie you've probably been hearing a lot about and hopefully that's going to continue going into award season. I know it's one of my favorites from the year so first of all congratulations on this one. Great movie. Thank you very much. Corey just to kick things off why don't you tell us a little bit about Georgie and where he fits into this story. Uh, Georgie is uh, a son of Julianne Moore's character, Gracie, from her first marriage, and he was 13 when um, Joe was also 13, and she had this affair with Joe and ended up getting pregnant, and um, so he lost his mom sort of at, at 13, and we see him at 36 when Joe is 36 um, in the the uh, the damage is done at that time, and um, so we see her as we see him as the collateral damage of of what happened. Absolutely, and decades of it, as you say. I think May December for me is a movie where most of the central characters are not very honest with themselves about who they are, um, or at least they're not very good at being able to see themselves fully. But I don't think that Georgie has that same problem. He feels to me the most like someone who really knows who he is, for better or for worse, maybe. Um, do you feel like that's accurate? I do not feel the same way as you do. <laughs> okay, great. Tell me about it. Uh, I think that he puts on a front that uh, looks and smells like confidence. Um, but I think this is someone who is not tended to the trauma that he experienced in his teenage years and so it has um sort of captured and caged him at this time in his life um you know he's he's a bit immature and a bit reckless and is sort of desperate for the attention and adoration and love that became a sudden deficit in his life after the age of 13 and i think some of his behavior is a demonstration of someone who uh, was raised by an overbearing mother and then suddenly didn't have one at all. Um, and also was living in a world suddenly where everyone knew who he was because of what his mother had done. And is constantly just connected to that and doesn't have his own identity and has worked really hard to like, craft something else that's very noticeable that belongs to him that he is that is not that I think is sort of uh what what I was trying to do yeah gotcha so you feel like it's a lot more um sort of flash and cover up because he hasn't been able to get to that substance and figure out who he really is yeah I think I think um I try to make some choices the way that he's you know communicating and talking about things where he has like a sense of humor about things with just like slight slides into getting lost in some uh very sad reflection and then pulls himself quickly out of it because he can't do it and it's not where he sort of lives yeah definitely I know one of the significant scenes that you have is with Natalie Portman's character Elizabeth and you give her some information about Gracie's past, which Gracie then later denies. And I've seen people speculating online whether or not he was telling the truth when he said that, or if he was just feeding Elizabeth like the story that she wanted to hear. Where do you stand on that? Um, look, one of the things that I've been enjoying immensely is people discussing this. So I'm not interested in sort of forecasting exactly what I was thinking. I have a I had a very clear, I have a very clear idea of how this plays out, but I sort of love the ambiguity. And one of the things was that we strategically did in that scene, I made sure with Todd that you really are not sure. And I think it's one of the gifts of the film. Absolutely. Okay. That's fair. Keep it open-ended for everybody. I respect it. You were talking earlier about making some specific choices for Georgie just to sort of add in the layers to who he is as a character and sort of give us 
a little bit of that traumatic past and this uh, these conflicting emotions that he's feeling, what are some of the choices that you made as an actor to sort of feed into that? Um, a few things. I mean, one of them is the way that he the way that he sort of uh, seeks attention, gets attention, um, the performative aspect of wanting to be seen. Um, I think part of that is mixed in with this cockiness that he has of her invading his space. You know, it's his restaurant where he performs and he feels really comfortable there. Uh, that it was really important for me in that first scene uh, in terms of creating a dynamic of the behavior, why he's saying things the way he does. Um, physically, there was a lot of uh, development creatively from our side on how we made him look, what it felt like, uh, you know, that he felt like a teenager. April Napier, our costume designer, brought in the idea of like having these chokers that sort of felt like a like a teenage girl almost uh that I really liked it felt kind of punk um and also teeny and uh I had designed all of these tattoos um that had different meanings and a lot of them you probably never see but they really mattered to me um and I tried to design them some that would he would have done like while a teenager you know like i had the word shady uh tattooed on my wrist in really thick chunky letters uh and then we faded that one out a lot so it looked older you know something like that that he just made a mistake uh so i felt like there was physical evidence of his recklessness and stupidity and youth that he you know uh has there I had um, on on my one of my forearms, fucked, fucked, fucked written, but like F-U-K-T, just stupid stuff like that. And then I, uh, I had some like shrooms on my, like near my clavicle that I don't know that you see, but I really enjoyed. Uh, he had an upside down triangle, uh, which, you know, it's like sort of, queer coded uh, the language is a bit coded that he's queer and he talks about giving a hand job not that that's like the thing is the hand job thing i'm like uh ah, georgie's sort of a liar and a bit of an enigma so like maybe that's not fully true or maybe that doesn't actually mean that he's queer but it sort of definitely leans that way but i have this upside down triangle behind his ear as sort of a uh no homage to that uh, so I just had a lot of things specifically designed for me to know who he was, or I really felt like I was in a body that was, that had history to it, where he was making really conscious choices about, you know, or I was making conscious choices about who he was physically through that. Awesome. I love getting to learn these like inside things. Now, when I go back and watch, I can see like what tattoos I can peek out and really watch for that. That's fun. Thank you. Yeah. Now I know this movie. Also there was an, sorry, I'll tell you about one more or two that I designed. Cause I actually just like the way it looks on the outside of my right forearm. I have, um, it says blister. It sort of looks like biter, but it's a, uh, because of the letters that were more bold, but it says blister. Um, because I liked the idea that he is this, he is this like blister that's like could be popped, you know, that he is this like damaged thing from too much heat in his life, uh, that, you know, he's like filled with this sickness and could like pop horrifying, but I, I see that I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. Now, I know this movie was a reunion of sorts for you with director Todd Haynes, because you also were in Carol. What was your reunion like and what really appeals to you about his style of filmmaking? Yeah, I did Carol with him, which I auditioned for. 
And then he invited me on to Wonderstruck. And I have a, a very small role in that that I was delighted he asked me to do. And then he invited me on to this project, fully acknowledging that this is a role that I that's unlike other roles that I have done. And there was an extension of trust in that that I so, so appreciated. Um you know, I, I Todd is, uh, he's a legend and, and a genius and such an astonishing craftsman. And for someone like that to extend trust is really empowering and exciting. And um, so I felt really honored by that and really excited in a lot of, you know, the sort of I spent a lot of time preparing for this, for like what it is, you know, it's these three scenes, but I really felt so vividly like I knew who this character was. I spent a great deal of time getting ready for it. And I had never, I had never like spent, I, I always uh, like work with music a lot before I do a performance, but I had never sort of drawn before. And just the, the activity of making the tattoos was so helpful to me and feeling really connected to him but I just felt so um really honored that Todd had invited me back again to do this and really I just wouldn't want to screw it up you know didn't want to screw it up so you gotta make sure you're doing the work uh and also you know what a cast so I wanted to be sure that I was really showing up and and one of the jobs that Georgie has in the script is to really create some serious problems for Natalie and I've never worked with Natalie I've had the privilege of working with some astonishing actresses and I think Natalie is just bee's knees and an exceptional talent and I wanted to really be ready to like play with her and cause problems for her uh so yeah Perfect. Look, you did the work for sure. It came out great. Congratulations on everything. Um, everyone, go check out May December. It is currently on Netflix. Thank you. Thanks so much for talking with me. My pleasure.